Greetings Leo. Hey, welcome to 2020, the brand new decade stepping forth into the unknown, merging into the age of Aquarius, which adds to the unknown. So yes, this, these are very big times. I hope you have all had a great New Year's and that you took some time over that New Year's Eve period to ponder your future and set some goals and aspirations. If you're watching this in December, then you have time to make sure that you do set aside a little bit of time as we march into the 2020s with some positive realizations, dreams and goals. The January astrology is very, very intense and we've just come off the back of the December the 26th solar eclipse, which is also particularly intense. With these vibrational energies going on, you can be sure of one thing, change. Nothing more than change is assured at this point in time. And for a lot of us, it will be unexpected change. I'm not saying necessarily for the bad, but I can guarantee you this, that by the time you get toward the end of this 20 decades and you look back on this beginning, you will not recognize the difference, the change that has taken place. In January, we have a conjunction of Pluto, Jupiter and Saturn, which some astrologers are terming a mind-blowing sound of change, which is massive. It has only happened twice in the last 2,000 years, and you can be guaranteed that when it happened, massive change took place. We will feel these changes uh, six months prior to them, so they've been merging now since the middle of 2019, and up to five years past this point, so this is very intense. Now Leo, before we start your actual reading, I did some intuitive work for you. You got this mantra that you can choose to utilize. It is, my unique talents and abilities flow through me and are expressed in deeply satisfying ways. You also got the color orange and red, the base chakra energy, which makes me think of grounding, finances, home, and the word protection came through for you as well. So let's start the shuffling for Leo for January 2020. You guys are third up for my readings. I'm not sure that I'm going to get all 12 done. I may run out of time, so I'm just hoping that I do. And if I do run out of time, I'm really sorry for the uh, astrology signs that I miss out on. But we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I'm sure everyone is really busy at this time of year um, with the festive season and just the ending of this decade coming upon us. Your first card out is the Three of Wands, sort of in a neither here nor there position. So possibly coming into your reality or taking shape more in the future as we move in. This is very much a card of the future anyhow. He is actually pondering his life and where he is heading with it. In particular, the Wands reference career. So this can be about pondering your career aspirations or directions. With this card, I often think of it as the card of expansion. So if any of you own your own businesses or are thinking of expanding out one way or another or getting yourself more global, this is the card that can represent this feeling or opportunity. This can also be a time when you have been offered a promotion or a career change and it may take you abroad, living in a different country or to a different state. Now quite often it references expansion of a business, so it might be a company you're working for that is expanding, or there's a possibility here that it's your own business and you are either wanting to start up or expand it and take it global. I often think of this card as being quite resonant with the modern uh, infrastructure of careers and work in society in as much that it infers internet, so it infers expansion by way of technology and through things like the internet. It is boded fairly well as a positive card. It has the yellow for the intellectual in the background. He possibly does need to make sure that he is incorporating all aspects of his dreams as he moves forward because some of these are behind him. So he's either leaving behind some important aspects that he still needs to foster or to grow or to look into 
or he's pondering how he gets to the distant shores without fully comprehending all of the information available. So this is about really tuning into your creative resources as well. So it's creativity and that comes from the sacral chakra and down at the base chakra area as well. Let's see what's next for Leo for January 2020. So some of you are starting this new decade literally pondering what is life bringing, where is it headed? You've seen the two cards that popped out together here and they seem uh, connected as if they are intertwined. These are two very nice cards. This is the Nine of Pentacles and the Ace of Cups, almost like this across each other as if they are not discombobulated but rather connected and merging together. Now the Nine of Pentacles can often be seen as an earth sign person so this might be relative for some of you. The Ace of Cups is traditionally it's the card of penultimate love of a deep spiritual commitment or union and the possibility of new love coming in. This new love may be associated with this earth sign person for some of you. Although she is an earth sign person, she's also talking about money and the abundance of money and feeling grounded. She's very outdoors. She is in harmony with life. She's in harmony with earth, with Gaia, with nature. And all of those points of harmony and joy and bliss and euphoria that she experiences in her life are providing her with the gratuitous gift of manifestation. So she is manifesting her desires. She has ample opportunity for financial gratification as well as emotional satisfaction and happiness. So there's a possibility that this person is either bringing some of this joy into your life or you guys are feeling this harmony and love and satisfaction and gratuitousness coming into your life. She also bodes quite well about attending events or uh, hosted by someone like this, by an earth sign person. Some of these events can be quite large and some of them are government related or have celebrities or politicians attend them. Now if any of you get the opportunity to attend a function like that, I'd really love to hear that in the comments section because I'm intrigued if the card picks that energy up for any of you watching. When it comes to the ace that was next to it, this ace is the card of conception. It is coming in from above and it is often about ideas and the feeling of love and harmony and spiritual enlightenment and bliss and some form of protection as well. And I of course mentioned the word protection in the very beginning. You've got three really lovely cards to start this journey of 2020, the decade into the 20s and this merging of the you know Aquarius realm. So the, the falling away of the Pis Piscean age and the moving into the Aquarian, which is the freedom thinking and the love of humanity and the love of freedom in particular. This Ace of Cups can also be conception of ideas or pregnancy or relationships or love or it's like a blessing. It's like a blessing from the heavens. So be ready to look into this month of January and feel into these energies that could be around for you. If you feel you're in a position where you don't experience these uh, possibilities or emotions or energies around you, seek into finding them. Have an open mind. Be ready to see what can't be seen. Be ready to read between the lines. Be ready to feel deeper than just on the surface of situations. Really open up Leo and become involved and dig deep and make the heart connection. You know, there's another um, one that's come out <laughs> and it's the victory card. Those four cards there are bubbling away with some sort of connection. They're very connected and there is now victory coming. 
victory card often talks about success in terms of career or a project you have been working on sometimes very much within academia or to do with our career this can be passing exams that you have been sitting becoming diplomat or uh, having a university degree that is being finalized becoming a doctorate of something there is great success in this card and it does bode that there are other people behind you who have also helped for this victory to come about this can be a promotion in a job it can be traveling because he is on a horse moving so it can be insinuating some sort of move within your career as I said a promotion or the possibility of contemplating expansion as we saw up here with this card this idea coming in from some sort of heavenly realm or a higher initiation or an understanding of the connection to the astral or the cosmic or your higher self finding answers that beam down to you you know like beam me up Scotty it's almost like it's coming from another realm and when these opportunities and moments come you have to dig deep to find them to connect with them because if you don't they glide past as if they were just pictures of art on the wall and you might have been looking at them in a museum and pondered what they might have meant when they could have been your life path so there's a great deal here about you doing the work, becoming connected, becoming open, finding the energy, finding the answers to your quest, feeling into the power and the passion. Great way to start this new decade, guys. And, I, and as I say, if you are not in this place and you are feeling like life hasn't offered you these things or you can't see them or you don't feel inspired by them then this is your message to take action and create some of these energies there's more wands it definitely feels for a lot of you career is on your mind expansion of career new ideas about career wanting to uh, obtain this gratuitous feeling of manifestation positivity happiness and opulence within a feeling of your creative world so for some of you it may not be a career but it's the creative passions that take you into places in your life this nine of wands is about not giving up some of you may have been on a journey for a long time and that the victory is coming you may not be aware of the victory yet it may still be some time away this nine talks to us about not giving up not being despondent about knowing the hard work and diligence and effort that has been put in is going to pay dividends somewhere sometime the nine can mean you have been on a long journey it could be nine years of journeying or learning or lessons or creativity or blocks this sometimes means that you feel as though you have been butting your head against a brick wall and that not enough has been happening quickly enough so the the basis of this for me is don't let anything stop you the world is your oyster get out there and take control take action look for the power look for the passion get that Leo strength going and formulated so it is a powerful wonderful positive start to your reading I'll put those up there in the background we will see what this deck brings for you guys this is for Leo for January for 2020 the brand new decade so leo what is it you would like them to understand or focus on past life issue for some of you this situation has a basis in one of your previous lifetimes ask your angels to help you remember release learn and heal from a past experience if there is something that you feel is holding you back or is uh, it's a conundrum 
like you cannot quite put your finger on something that might be bugging you or has stuck with you or has been an incident or an event in your life but you keep coming back to it and going what is it how could it have ended up this way why did it happen why have i experienced this it has something to do with a past life so just fetching the card from the from the ground the god box has come out for you as well and the god box has been quite prevalent this month around it's a quite a simplistic tool of usefulness you find like a little and i wish i had one here just a little box of some sort a little jewelry box or a anything even a match box would do and in it you write anything that you wish to give to the universe to help solve a problem or find a solution to it can be a worry or an upset or a trauma or it can be your desires the things that you are looking for and wanting most it can be you could put this past life issue in the god box and ask the universe to help solve it remember with past life issues when they present themselves to us they are actually here to teach us to grow and to heal and to forgive as well we do often do most of our biggest growth and understanding when we experience past past life events including relationships or trauma or issues or events so that could be a major thing too that that if you worked through it and disabled any negativity around it but enabled positivity growth and flow you could find it would be freeing you up to make these decisions you've received the goddess card as well express your divine feminine energy embracing its magical intuition and nurturing qualities it's in in itself the card is really spectacular to look at it's very much like feeling as if you are being transported to the astral realms into a celestial place of unknown possibilities of source energy of creative divinity now the goddess card is not dissimilar in many ways to her because even though she's much more grounded and this is coming to you through a far more expansive creative mode she is divine feminine energy and she's embracing her intuition and nurturing qualities so there's a lot in here about connecting with your higher self with the intuitive abilities and with nurturing nurturing yourself as well as life in general and the expansiveness of your dreams and desires this is a great reading to come to and to come back to and listen to if you are feeling not necessarily troubled but feeling flat or feeling as though you have run out of ideas or connection at any time even during the whole year as we are moving into 2020 because for some reason uh, I was thinking earlier that these readings were more than just January they were readings that were leading us into the doorway of the 20s which are far longer than one month at the beginning of this decade now remember your your mantra at the beginning was my unique talents and abilities flow through me and are expressed in deeply satisfying ways and this says express your divine feminine energy embracing its magical intuition and nurturing qualities and don't think that if you're a male watching this that this is all about females and feminine energy and yeah yeah you know I'm a male we all have the goddess and the feminine energy in us these are our nurturing intuitive aspects and males as much as females need to call upon it and connect with it as well this deck of cards I was just shuffling are the Ch chakra insight oracle deck and I thought this would be a nice time for you guys to have one of these and you have received the throat chakra 
which is very much about communication, which is also about listening and talking, hearing others speak and speaking yourself and not being afraid to speak up, to be heard, to stand up and speak for yourself. Communication is also how we get things such as this, our creative expansion occurring. The throat chakra could also represent something in that part of the body that needs attention. Some of you may have a throat issue and it may be that you need to have it looked into medically. So that could be teeth, throat, thyroid, it could be up in the gums, it can be up in the sinuses as well. If that chakra is blocked, then it prevents flow from the others coming up and moving into the spiritual realm. So that might need um, opening as well. And in fact, we're still in the throat chakra energy with the blue card. And this one is expression, assertiveness, self-control and direction. In fact, that was 29 and this is 30. So you ha have really got quite a firm message here about your will, about willpower, determination. I will read for you some of it so that you can gain a little bit more strength, the Leo strength. This card is about the expression and communication of our will. It's our voicing our opinions and our feeling comfortable to state who we are with pride. It is about being able to assert your will so that you have self-control and are able to maintain personal boundaries and choices. If we have a strong will, we are able to move beyond resistance, beyond doubts, beyond opinions and judgments of others and ourselves. This is an invitation to ignite your personal willpower in alignment with what is most important to you through the simple steps you take in the world each day, the foods you eat or choose not to eat, your spiritual practice, your fitness regime and work you engage in. It is one thing to set a goal for health, love, financial or creative success. It is another thing to follow through with empowered, willful action. It is time now to move steadily in the direction of that which you feel most called to do. And I can't help but get this one back with it because that was the whole portrayal from the very first card to this one here this moving in the direction that you so called, that you so feel called to do. This encourages you to acknowledge who you are and to practice living in alignment with this. To speak up, communicate and fully express your truth. When we have a strong will, we are not forceful. Instead, we are simply secure in who we are and what we are doing. We do not need to control or dominate others, nor do we allow ourselves to be pulled off course or knocked off balance. When our will is engaged, there is a quiet, humble strength in our words and actions. Our unique path unfolds before us as our true will and that of the universe align. A strong will allows our truth to shine. And the other card that really represents that is this beautiful Ace of Cups. When we are aligned, the universe designs our dreams and desires and they easily come into manifestation. And the Ace of Cups is literally that. Those are three very powerful cards to utilize, focus on, dream upon and aspire to head in this new direction of the decade as we open the doors and ponder our future.
there was one more card I was going to do for you guys and these are intense cards this is a message that a lot will really love some of you might find it a little heavier it's up to you how you feel about the message that comes through I think I'm holding them upside down anyhow we're going to see what is in store for Leo what would you like to as the final message of this very important reading merging into the new decade what would you like Leo to know to understand and to hear Ascended Master Mother Mary and Celestite unconditional trust it is so beautiful calming and soothing and guys you've got more blue again Celestite is a magical crystal that connects with the spiritual realm and ethers and the angels at a very deep level. What I will do for you is I will set the card up with my beautiful Celestite sitting above it so that you can feel the full pull and force of the energy of the card, the message I will be reading and the crystal. Ascended Master Mother Mary and Celestite, we bring you the blessing of unconditional trust. There are times when trust comes easily. Perhaps life is proceeding according to some sort of plan, or you have enough money to feel safe, sufficient prospects on the horizon to feel excited, and enough love in your relationship to feel wanted and valued. Then there are times when it is harder to trust. Perhaps none of the above applies to you. You may feel lost, feel alone, confused and without a clear plan or sign of hope ahead. You may be frightened and just want something to lift you out of the darkness and into the light. Your mind and perhaps your family and friends might tell you that this is a time that is crazy to trust. They may tell you that you should try to fix yourself or get real, give up or get on with life. Do not listen to doubts or negativity in others or yourself. It is safe to trust. The Divine Mother is watching over you and will guide you safely into the new life awaiting you now. The Oracle of Unconditional Trust says to you that this is the time when you need to trust the most. This is the time when you need to trust unconditionally. You may feel comfortable doing this, or you may feel deeply challenged by this idea. You may feel there is no particular evidence that you should trust, and yet you'll happily do it anyway. Or maybe you feel that trusting without a sign that things are going to improve is beyond you. Either way, this oracle brings you a message. The divine is looking out for you. For the weary and anxious mind, unconditional trust can bring such relief. The idea that you don't have to keep worrying and that everything is going to work out according to a higher plan and divine grace can soothe away mental anguish and emotional suffering. If it is difficult for the mind to let go, it might prefer to keep worrying and trying to work things out. This could be especially so if you have relied upon people before and been let down, or don't feel absolutely certain the universe loves you and has your best interest at heart. If the mind is in a fear response like this, it needs to be reassured. It needs to understand why you are in a situation where unconditional trust is being asked of you in the first place. There may be reasons, some of which you come to understand in hindsight. This is one reason that is always true, however, and it may help your mind to relax a little and allow your heart to take over. 
This reason is that the divine wants to be more involved in your life. It wants to help you avoid unnecessary pitfalls, pain and obstacles and only go through the suffering absolutely essential for your growth. That is so much less than what we fear or expect it to be. It wants you to be filled with divine love and to live a life that is increasingly free, graceful and blessed so you inspire others to trust unconditionally too. How can this happen? Only when you allow the divine unrestricted access to your life. The only way you can do that is by trusting unconditionally. Imagine abseiling down a cliff. The divine is spotting you from below and above. It can see where you could stumble and is managing the ropes so you are secure. You still take the journey yourself but you have some divine eyes, hands and guidance to help you take the journey in the best way. You might have difficulty trusting in your spotters. You might stop and keep checking for yourself what is happening and yet still not be able to see the entire cliff face clearly. Maybe you get twisted in your ropes, become frozen in fear or ignore the guidance and end up hurting yourself. You may believe that the pain you experienced happened because your spotters weren't trustworthy. Actually, it happened because you weren't trusting. That's okay. It's not fun, but it happens sometimes. The divine is always there waiting for us to trust with loving guidance and a willingness to help us find an easier way next time. This is how we learn and grow as human beings and become more able to let the universe help us in life. When this oracle comes to you, it brings guidance. It's safer to trust unconditionally in the divine guiding hand than the limited perspective of your own mind at this time. The divine can and will navigate you safely through your life journey if you allow it. You don't have to be afraid. You'll handle whatever you need to handle and you'll do it well but you have the opportunity to avoid unnecessary suffering and enjoy a smoother journey by trusting unconditionally that your affairs are going to work out and work exceptionally well. So do that for yourself now by trusting that everything is working out. And that beautiful celestite crystal is connecting to the higher vibrational white light energy to the angelic realm so any time you feel you need help or protection or support or ease of suffering call upon this energy center right here in this reading. So there we are Leo a powerful powerful way for you guys to move into 2020 to walk through that portal, that new timeline, this new dimension that we are all creating as we surge forward with this fast-paced decade. Thank you all for subbing the channel, for liking, for leaving your comments. I appreciate it all, as do the community. Much love, happiness and success to you all. Namaste.